society is concerned with global warming and carbon emissions. Buildings and building construction account for more than half of all CO2 emissions. If we are to reduce emissions, we need to make buildings energy efficient. But we also need to use low energy methods of achieving this. Natural materials not only help to make buildings energy efficient, but also they can make buildings healthier and function better. Natural materials generally have a much lower carbon footprint than conventional building materials. Most conventional materials consume a great deal of fossil fuel energy to produce and therefore contribute to CO2 emissions. We've been trying to find a method of building that's low carbon and energy efficient, simple and affordable, that uses natural materials. Uh, hemp and lime mixed together seems to answer all of those needs. This is a technique of construction was developed in France about 10 years ago and used to a small extent there, but actually didn't really take off for some reason. We found out about the technology, did our own research, a number of people came together in the UK and we decided it was something that was commercially viable and uh, it's taken off to a large extent here. There are probably about 50 hempcrete buildings all over the UK ranging from a brewery warehouse, a 20 million pound project, down to individual houses and uh, even people's sort of summer houses in their garden. I mean it's been used for all sorts of different forms of construction. This building, apart from the fact that it's a small house that's for my father to live in, it's a demonstration of this technique so that we can prove that it works, we can show it to other people and to other architects, other professionals and builders so that if you want to convince them of the technique they can actually come along and have a look at it and see it in the flesh. It's quite unique, it hasn't been done before in Northern Ireland. So this is us able to test both the processing and the complications and detailing um, on a building which is for ourselves. The hemp research project was funded by DEFRA to look into hemp, which is a crop, being used as a natural insulation, but here cast with hemp. So this has led to a publication, a book has just recently been published by ourselves and other co-writers. So this is quite timely that this building is now happening exactly at this point. And in fact, we'll probably be even reviewing some of the details that are in that book because um, we very much have a hands-on understanding of using the material now. We started the superstructure, that's the work above ground, four months ago. We start off with quite traditional footings, uh, a normal strip footing around the building and brought it up in block work up to subfloor level unavoidably using cement which we you know had to do and be pragmatic about that and then we started the primary structure and what we decided to do was to start off actually with the the principal the posts and the beams holding the roof structure to end up with a sheltered framework and that was followed by the stud work around the perimeter which is then being cast around with the hemp and lime The hemp needs a sort of rethinking in terms of what we call traditional building construction because we've been using a cavity block construction for the last century really and a lot of plastics in buildings. So this is a monolithic construction and the insulation properties of the hemp are both that it's a good insulant but also has thermal mass. Monolithic means that it's one material right through. Uh, it does have a stud wall buried in the middle of it but it isn't layers of separate materials. So even timber frame construction, which is favoured by a lot of people who are trying to improve insulation, has too many layers and too many different processes, and that's what we're trying to reduce. This is the primary structure carrying the roof flow. That's Douglas fir, locally sourced, and that was constructed at the beginning of the process. Here you can see the tail end of the shattering, which is yet to be removed and this section it has been taken away. This is cast just a few days ago and still soft to the touch but firm. You can see it's solid enough. 
This is the stud wall that's sitting in the middle of that 300 thick lime casting. So that's permanent with some noggings, cross noggings for stiffness. And here we're back to a section that's not finished being cast yet. This is the base of the post here with a, a rigid fixing. So we got rigidity in the whole building frame from the start, sitting on its own pad stone and the subfloor level there below. Uh, this is the radon barrier coming up, tucked into the DPC. And we have the electrics that we had to put this ducting in ahead of the hemp being cast. Here we have one of the electric sockets which we've cast into the wall because it wouldn't be practical to try and chase this material. So you've got to cast them in at the time. And then here we've got the window reveal which is lined with the Heraclith board which is a permanent shutter and that would stay in place. The main thing that architects want to know about this is how well does it work from a thermal point of view. So a 300 millimetre thick wall like the one we're building here will provide uh, good enough insulation to meet part L of the building regulations depending on whether you're in Northern Ireland or England. And um, that gives you a U value of somewhere about 0.21 to 23. What we found though is that the performance of the building is much better than that indicated simply by the U value because of the thermal mass of the material. So where the uh, tests have been done on completed buildings they found that there's almost zero energy required within the building to keep it warm and that whatever the temperature is doing outside it stays exactly the same inside. So it actually has a very very good thermal performance. It also extremely good acoustically, it absorbs sound and so it's very very good if you want to reduce the noise in buildings and it also helps to buffer humidity within the building so it actually absorbs moisture and means that it reduces the risk of mole growth and uh, condensation in a building so it's what's known as breathable construction now that's a very difficult term to define but hemp lime really does all of those things you know just in one very simple form of construction We've actually had to import the hemp from a producer and supplier in England. Um, it is actually the waste crop of a hemp. It's a very valuable crop. So it's not the long fibres, it's the outer case chopped up. But fibres are very beneficial in any reinforcement. They have a very good properties to bind together a construction. Once on site, we take the big bales of hemp two bales of those to four bags of the proprietary lime mix made by Tradical. They are first dry mix in a pan mixer, which is not the normal cement mixer, much bigger and horizontal. They're mixed dry and then the controlled amount of water added. And what we end up with is a dry crumbly mix, similar to apple crumble topping, so it's not sloppy dropped into the chuttering and then tamped with not too much pressure because we're trying to keep some air pockets for the insulation benefit. The chuttering can be lifted within say 12 hour period to a raised position so we haven't had to shutter the whole building and pour the whole building in fact we have to do it in control height so we can reach to do the tamping. The shuttering comes off quite easily and you end up with a, quite a smooth surface, particularly if you've tamped quite carefully. It still feels soft to touch, you could put your thumb in it and would be prone to damage if people were careless with it, but actually is self-supporting. In fact, it would hold itself within.